you probably know her from patal swastika mukherjee sprang into the national consciousness playing the anxiety ridden desperately lonely dolly mera whose love for a stray dog saves her husband's life she followed that up with one of the most anticipated films of the year sushant singh rajput's last feature dil bechara in which swastika played mrs basu mother of a cancer patient trying her best to squeeze joy from life while she can but swastika isn't an overnight success for more than two decades the actor has been an a list star in bengali cinema with over 60 titles in film and television she has done a range of characters from glamorous ghost to broken abused housewife she's also provocative and fearless on social media speaking her mind on a range of issues including women's rights and mental health swastika has never hidden her scars literal and metaphorical from the world she's broken the mold for women in film which is why she is a first mover Hi Swastika, welcome to First Movers in Film empowered by Bumble, a social media app where women make the first move. Thank you so much for having me here. It's quite an honor and I'm very excited and nervous also and elated. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm just you know. <laughs> no being no, you're looking you're looking amazing. You just raised the bar for how women need to look in Zoom interviews. <laughs> oh my god. No no, looking at you I've forgotten it's 2020. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, Swastika you're such a fine actor. But what I also admire is is your lack of vanity. So in 2015 you played the sort of femme fatale Anguri Devi opposite Sushant Singh Rajput in in Dibakar Banerjee's Detective Bhomkesh Bakshi. Yes. Five years later in Dil Bechara yeah. with the same actor you are the mother-in-law figure and obviously yeah. you didn't have a problem with it. Um, you yeah. know I saw I saw Tashir Ghor and. you know the camera is it's a very tough film it's a one person show you it's all on you the camera's capturing you not in the most flattering way your bra strap is showing your your at the depth of misery that any human being can be in and you're there giving it 100% not caring about anything else so i want to start by just asking you have you always been this secure as an actor um yes i think more or less i was and i am and i feel as an actor it's very important that you look the part uh you know it that part can be um, good bad ugly it can require you to uh, show your stomach in a set in a you know in a specific way uh, you may need to look bad look uh, sloppy look uninteresting uh look undesirable but um as an actor and um, because i am a woman who is an actor it's very important to not prioritize the fact that you need, need to look like a dream constantly i think um i'm very inspired by vidya balan and uh, i really take uh, her very seriously and uh, you know i really um read and see all her interviews not now i've been doing it for a very long time and um, i think uh, you know your body type of an actor is has nothing to do with the talent and the dedication and the hard work and uh, if i was supposed to look like anguri devi i looked that way i i really don't think anybody had a problem in accepting me as uh, kizzy's mom it's actually a, you didn't even have a minute of like Oh my god I was just playing this man's leading lady 5 years ago now you're casting me as as his mother in law uh, you did not have even a second of that no i think because it's bollywood so people expected me to think um more cautiously about it but um in bengal where i i have been working for the last 20 years um i have played the uh, mother to actors who are almost my age so a lot of times i have uh, I have done films which other people were not doing, and then later on, I was like so thankful that nobody did them, and I I got to play the part. So, <laughs> Sagar, you said in an interview that um, your in your head, you're always focusing on uh, the subtext and the script which wasn't written. 
Can you talk a little more about that? What do you mean by that? So whatever script comes to an actor, we always see, we always find that it starts from one point of that character's life. I mean, if if we talk about uh, Tasha Ghor, uh, for instance, or uh, or Patan Lu, we don't really know what led Dolly Mehra or what led Sujata become like this. Because if I don't know somebody's past, how am I supposed to, you know, react to what is going on in her life right now? You know, I want to talk to you a little about Sujata. Um, this is this is a housewife. She's obviously had awful things happen to her uh, in this terrible marriage that she's in. Uh, there is one scene, uh, Swastika, where you know she's been raped by her husband. She's in the bathroom. Um, she's crying, uh, and it's just so heartbreaking. How did you find your way into that? level of pain we shot the uh, film in july and uh, throughout the lockdown which started end of march um like all of us we've been aware of the various um, you know stories of abuse and domestic violence that was all around us so i think that that uh, that entire phase has been disturbing for all of us uh, for all all of us who were going through it and um, i also lost my father uh, this year right before the lockdown so you know that grief and pain was already there uh, the emotions were like like you know going haywire either way in my head i remember um, we shot that scene that was the first scene of one of the days in the schedule and there was some date and time problem with actors that happen all the time and i was just going on telling shudik peroy my director that i mean the first scene of the day is this when i'm getting raped by my husband and uh, both my parents have passed away so i think you know that the grief of uh, losing parents and then the entire lockdown everything just helped me which i mean it just sounds pathetic and selfish but You know, I, I think I've got into that headspace where whatever happens around me, whether it's very you know exciting or exotic or men or hard breaks or whatever is happening, after five ten minutes in my head, I'm like, okay, maybe I can use it somewhere. If you're doing such scenes and playing such roles, I don't know, but you know, for me, I I always feel um, you give so much to a character. You also take take a bit from the character back home. What do you think is a first move that you made professionally that has enabled you to be where you are? Not wanting to look pretty, mm-hmm. but uh, my in my first film I played a mother. Um, I was I was twenty one, I think twenty one or twenty two. I played a mother, uh, and ultimately who dies uh, in cancer. So the entire film, I looked like you know, I'm dying, like haggard and hair not done properly. And my contemporary actors were all in mini skirts with a lot of glass, lashes, curls, and tongs and all that. And um, always, you know, playing very energetic school, college kind of kids, romancing heroes, going to Switzerland here and there. And I was, um, you know. Um, Running households and dying. <laughs> I I didn't play the lead heroine all the time, so I've I've done no uh, I've done films where uh, I was not getting the hero, but there was a lot of performance happening. So I was very happy, and I always chose to do those roles, which will make uh, commercial film, you know, uh, watchers and audience uh, maro city and throw coins and all that. So I used to get excited when I went for night shows with my mom or with my friends that people are throwing coins and you know cold drinks, um, open bottle covers and everything on my scenes. I mean, all that is okay, kept for heroes. People don't do all that uh, for heroines, and it was happening with me. So I was like, okay, I've taken the right decision, and yeah. I'm on the right track. So I'll just stick to doing roles which uh, which has a lot of performance. 
I'm also amazed, um, Swastika, at how open you have been about your struggle with mental health, your challenges with mental health. Um, last year, I think, on, on World Suicide Prevention Day, uh, you posted on your social media, you know, self-harm scars on your uh, arm, and you were very, very upfront about it. Uh, did you, even for a minute, consider how this might impact on your career? Because this is still something that Indians have such a hard time talking about. I feel it's very important to important to speak and I feel it's very important that you have to take the risk sometime. I mean, at some point of time, you have to do it. Because, uh, you know, the, the insecurity you were talking about, you were asking me, for actors, it's always not about work, that you you know, you'll be losing this film or some other younger heroine is going to come and take your space or, you know, you need to flaunt your um, stature by cars and, you know, um, houses and, you know, maintain this or that. I think we are also insecure about the image that we have and we don't want to lose it. And what if um, people think you've really gone crazy in your head and don't give you work or audience doesn't go back to the hall to watch you. These are also the other kind of insecurities that fill up our lives. But at some point, you have to let go and speak up. Otherwise, I mean, you're not getting younger. And uh, I think it's very important to do it, you know, rather than just going on preaching and waiting for others to do. Because we, we our protests, our, um, our opinions, our wanting to change things around us, it's kind of just stuck to Twitter and Facebook. I mean, I don't really see people people actually, you know, jumping from the cliff or taking that call or risking anything in their lives to do it. It's always about ye karna chahiye, ye hona chahiye, you know. So I just thought in my head that if I can't share my story, how am I, what am I telling women or men or human beings to share their stories, come out in the open, is we are just a phone call away, you know, this is the number of the helpline, if you're in deep shit and, you know, you're, you just think you're losing it, call on this helpline. I mean, why the hell should they call? Because I am not calling anybody, I am not sharing my story with anyone. So if I am going out there and telling people, you know, I am there, you come to me, you talk to me, and I, I myself am not coming out in the open and hiding. Uh, and not sharing my story. And also I feel um, if I can be the voice of 10 other people and if they, if they you know, see, find the strength and the courage that me being a public figure, always under the standard of the media, always getting trolled, can, you know, have the strength to come out in the open then people who are in a less troubled situation than me, as far as the so social pressure is concerned, will also find the courage to come out. Swastika, you got married at 18 and two years later you separated from your husband. Uh, your personal life is often splashed across, you know, the media. They portray you as a femme fatale off screen as well. How do you process this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see, one thing I would really uh, like to advise um, actors especially, never to be honest about your uh, personal life. I think nobody cares about that honesty. Nobody wants to know the love life or the heartbreaks of an actor. It just becomes a, this big, huge ball of gossip. And people are just interested in the gossip. They're not interested in the quality or the intensity of the affair or the love or what what is happening behind closed doors. It's just the gossip. So, yeah. Now I am completely tight-lipped. Yeah, and um, actually I have always thought that I have this image that I've had kind of 40 relationships but I've had only four. So that's like a very sad number. I should have actually dated 40, 50 numbers. वैसे भी बदनाम होना है तो करके बदनाम हो जाएंगे. कुछ किया नहीं, बेकार में, you know, getting all these tags. 
and women are the ones who get these tags so that is also funny yeah. so i was like okay so, you know people think i have had like a monstrous roaring love life it's good to show them healthy so it's fine i i open a account uh on bumble yeah make my life it's exciting <laughs> <laughs> indeed and and very beautiful as we can see what are the first moves that you would advise women to make in their lives to make a difference firstly i would number one should be uh, you know should be happy with your body type and your skin color and uh, hair or no hair and yeah this is number one number two um i think we we women and men of course because this is a pressure uh, on both genders we are kind of um, since childhood we i think we 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 get into this habit of thinking uh, marriage and having kids is a solution to all problems even if your marriage is uh, you know having a difficulty we hear social pressure and family pressure bachcha ho jane to sab theek ho jayega so i i really don't think marriage and having babies uh, is a solution to any problem whatsoever you should only get married and have children when you really want to also i think for women um i feel we should learn to enjoy our drinks alone i i think we should we should learn to go out and have that drink alone and feel happy with ourselves uh, number 3 and number 4 i think um women should um, secure themselves financially women should be aware of um, investments you know banking procedures um their own accounts and everything that is related to finance what are the things you wish you knew when you first started out i think first and foremost i didn't know that um, almost at 30 i'm going to give an interview to anupama chopra when i started my career and this new door called bollywood is going to open in my life what are the things you're tired of hearing because of your gender oh i can say 10 things there <laughs> <laughs> uh i think um why have you put on so much weight and how did you lose so much weight right so but i get to hear the put on weight like way more than losing weight thing uh that is number one the, then the second thing is um you girls have it easy for women the moment you take a stand and you speak up and it's not about you know it's not for your own even if you're doing it for others you're labeled as a feminist i'm sure and i know there are so many men who speak up for women what do you label them as i mean this this question had really has really bugged me for a long time the women taking a stand uh, for others or speaking about anything that makes sense in today's world and needs to be spoken you're called a feminist yeah? is feminist that a bad thing? is that a bad do you see that as a bad thing no i you know it uh, feminist word i think ha- just comes out in a very derogatory manner nowadays i mean you're labeled as a feminist and it the kind of things you uh, the way it's projected i mean you know it's as if it's not a nice thing and you are one of those mocha parties you know like okay you now you know if the revolt is going to happen and there will be marches and protests and okay now be chalu ho gaye tum log kind of feel to that word yeah so yeah so i think that is unfortunate because or or you know they can just find some other words to use for us because i'm sure we will not stop talking what are the tips that you would give to an aspiring actor give as much auditions as you can drop your ego and go and give as much auditions as you can because even if you don't get the part you will become less camera shy you will gain the experience of playing so many characters and uh, you will you will stay humble observing is the key Now, observation is the key observing people around you human behavior 
how they walk, how they talk, even how people sneeze. Because you never know what what you can pick up from where and uh, you know use it, replay it in your head. And also as actors, you you have to you have to start practicing storing things in your mind. Yeah. No, that's that is very sound advice, Swastika. I would advise all aspiring actors to live by your rules. Thank you so much. It's been Thank so you. lovely to chat with you. Thank you so Thank much. You. And and cannot wait to see you in whatever you do next. Bumble connects people across dating, friendship, and professional networking. No matter the type of relationship, women make the first move on Bumble.